Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Ral. And uh, this week, um, I've had a couple of uh, requests to do um, a couple of different videos. So I decided I'm going to do something a little bit different here. But uh, as you can see, I, I, I can't put the 64 GTO away. Um, so it's on my filming bench. But this is actually my workbench. But I'm going to take you for a little tour of a few things. So I'm going to take the camera off of here. And then also, I just want you to, to know that I really appreciate you guys looking at my videos and your comments, and I really appreciate it. it it's a lot of fun for me. I'm very passionate about model cars. You guys know that, and muscle cars. And I, I love researching them. And I'm glad that you guys are enjoying um, what I'm putting out there. So for that, I'm very thankful. And with Thanksgiving coming up here in a few weeks, I want everybody to know that. And I, I, I love my muscle cars. I love modeling. I've been doing it since I was eight years old. I'm 46 now. Um, I did have a small stint like everybody else. My story got a driver's license, started working on my own cars and building. I stopped building shortly after that. But after we got married and bought the house in about 2000, I still had my model cars. I got back to building again because I didn't have any money, but I'm still passionate about it. So. Um, that's why I, might, I, I got quite a bit of cars in my stash, and I've been getting requests for that. So I'm going to show you my modest little work area. It's a 1,300 foot square foot house that me and my wife share, and I have a three-year-old son now, which I love. We're having a blast. Play with him all the time. So my modeling time is limited to nights and lunch hours, and, and when he's not around is, is you know my free time. So I don't watch a whole lot of TV. And I'm very thankful that my wife she puts up with it she she's okay with it when it comes to building cars and models I'm home I'm accessible she knows where the money's going even though sometimes it does bother her sometimes with the, the stuff that's crowding the house um, but she understands her and her girlfriends they were talking about some of that stuff like that and one pointed out that he's home he's not at the bar she knows what I'm doing and she's she's great with that and she's actually okay with cars too because she probably couldn't put up with me if, if she wasn't. Um, but I mean, I'll get more into that too. You know, if you haven't seen her car, I'm showing you that today too. So towards the end of this video, I'm going to show you the real cars too. Um, some pretty, some not so pretty. But uh, I've made comments about my, my cars and our cars. But uh, so here's a quick tour of my, my work area, my stash. So we'll start walking around here. First, this is the filming area. I'll pan out a little bit. I mean, this is, you know, the table I work on. And it's not real fancy. There's my tripod and my three lights. It's not the greatest, but it's working for me. You know, it's pretty modest. Off to the right here, this is one of our stashes. Um, one of my curio cabinets. This is about 100 models in here. So... Um, you know, you're going to see a bunch of these featured. A lot of these are a little bit dusty and they need to be cleaned up. But, I mean, you can see that most of my Mopars are in here. And uh, there's quite a number of them. This is my second curio cabinet. It was full. It was in the living room. It, it holds another 100 cars. And uh, it's empty now. And I'll show you where those cars are. Now, right next to it, this is my cabinet of stock. Um... Of course, you can see the Torino and the AMX. I haven't even taken them out of the boxes yet. My two that have been featured, the Baldwin Motions. Uh, some of my Masters, and I got my paint over here. And uh, um, a lot of my paints that I use, and you know, my supplies. And then in these totes down here, those are miscellaneous projects. The bottom two totes are full of resin, uh, resin kits. Then I've got some kits right there that I've kind of started and messed with and a, a huge thing of decals. That next tote is actually full of some Thunderbirds. Then that tote is um, parts kits and miscellaneous parts. And I got a couple of Panteras and one below it. And then the ones I am building are right behind me. These are the ones that uh, I am working on. Some you've seen, some you haven't. There's the Javelin. Here's a 67 Mustang GTA 390 I've been working on. The 68 Mustang Super Cobra Jet, which uh, you, you only saw the body in my clear coat. It's kind of stalled. 
these dates here that's the year I started them so you'll see 2018 2018 2019 and I put notes on them here's a 2014 Camaro Z28 I started two years ago it's um, uh, Plamos conversion kit that's pretty far along but I haven't shown that at all and here's the Lamborghini Mura that has been stalled and started I re clear coated that one but I mean you can see I started it in 2010 but I'm working on a lot of the kits I stalled down here is the same thing these are all most of these are kits that I have started and stalled in, in many different directions so these are all ones that I just need to get done um, many of them are stalled for various reasons and then to get into my stash these closet doors behind my my workbench that you see all the time that is my stash that's behind these closet doors so we'll start sliding this open for you guys so you can see here and like I said it's top to bottom to the brim just full they're too deep so I mean these kits they're they're way up in there you see some of my vintage kits there's a javelin a marlin 72 Grand Prix Cougar that I just went over, 6.7 Barracuda, 68, and then their SC Ramblers and some more modern kits. You know, the new Cuda 70 Challenger. And there's actually two built ups in here. This is not an unbuilt kit. AMX, that's uh, also in the one I featured, 70 Cougar convertible. But, uh, and then, you know, another real muscle car there, the Shelby Charger. But, uh, Lots of kits in here. Lots to go through. So they're neatly packed away. Keep them uh, away from my three-year-old and keep them things. So I, I do have to dig them out. And then onto the other side here. We got uh, a whole lot more. Some of my European ones, some Lamborghinis, but a bunch of Pontiacs and Buicks and other miscellaneous holes and builds. They're kind of organized, kind of not. Some GTOs, some Thunderbirds and Fords and miscellaneous kits, but I really need to organize them better. But they're jammed in there. There's just a, a ton of kits in there. So it's it's overflowing and I really need to get them stored better um, but that's where they're all at like I said I got to dig them all out oh and then on the other side here's my workbench work area for when I do my editing and the videos for you this is my wife and I's computer desk not the cleanest but it's a 13 square foot 1300 square foot house and then here's a bunch more of my finished ones. These are all in individual cases. You'll see a good chunk of them. All except these five right here. Those actually are not mine. I didn't build those. Those are uh, a friend of mine's dad, who unfortunately he's in a care home now and couldn't keep his models with him. But so I inherited them and I picked my favorite five. This is mine. And then a couple of Grail kits. A couple of 70 Javelin, 69 Javelin. And that top box is a reproduction box. It's not an original. So it's not a sealed kit in that one. But the other two are sealed kits. And my boy, about a year and a half. Got another photo of him down here. Having a lot of fun with him. His handprint. And then my favorite clock. This is my Mopar 440 Super Commando clock. It is an unstamped pipe hand that I put into a clock. Battery's dead right now. I need to put another battery in it, so it tells you how much I look at it, but I love it. It's an awesome clock. But this is the work area and where I do my editing and all of my videos for you guys. But uh, yeah, there's some more of my finished ones, so a little glimpse there for you guys. And you'll see some that you recognize and a lot of them I'll go over. But uh, that's my work area. And then now to get into the garage and show you the, the garage or the other half of my stash that's hidden in the bedroom. So I'll show you that next and then we'll get out to the garage. Well, here's a little bonus. I just want to show off my uh, son's room since uh, 
you know, I'm trying to raise them to be a carnet. So I got a few Mopars right here. But uh, I got to show you this wall. Check that out. With the help of my brother, him and I hand painted this. And it took us about a month to do it. So this is in my, my son's room. And I just kind of want to show it off. And not something that uh, I've ever done before. I was good at drawing. So, uh, you know, we... Uh, we collaborated and he helped me and we both painted this so with the help of my brother um, this thing this thing came out awesome told my wife's like hey you mind if I do something for my son's room and you know I, she's like sure what do you have in mind it's like I don't know and Looney Tunes came to mind and Tiny Tunes so we uh, started drawing these and coloring them painting them and then filled in the background um, so we took d elements of different things that they did in the cartoons. But I just wanted to show you this as a nice little bonus. But uh, it's in my son's room and, you know, it goes goes really well with everything else. And uh, since he's three, he got his day bed. So we converted it and he's super excited about that. But uh, anyway, just wanted to show this off to you guys and now we'll move on. Well, here we are in my master bedroom and I'm just showing you the wall above my closet here where I keep another 96 finished model cars um, a few of these I have featured um, I'll feature many more of these but you can see you know got a, you know, a vast collection here so mostly these are the Chevy's Nova's and Chevelle's and then a couple of Oldsmobile's and there's Corvettes and uh, some Tri-Fi Chevy's and a lot of my Fords here um, Thunderbirds and and then that whole block is all uh, Shelby Mustangs and Cobras. But uh, yeah, I'll be featuring those. And, but they're hidden up here. And I got room for more cases uh, above and, and off to the side here. So I'll be adding to it. But it keeps them out of uh, my son's hands. And they're here where I can see them. So just wanted to show you. Here's the rest of my completed stash. And you'll be seeing more of them. And uh, I will continue on with the tour. Next up is the garage. Well, here we are. This is my daily driver. It's a 99 S10 Extreme 4.3 V6. Pumping 200 horsepower. And it's a little shy. It's actually, I think, 195. And 250 foot-pounds of torque. Um, this is not really stock. It's fairly stock. It got a Magnaflow cat-back exhaust and a Magnaflow uh, high-flow cat. Um, and then the uh, wheels and disc brakes and a couple little trim options you know spruce it up a little bit it's a handler I love the thing and it's got 250,000 miles and and I bought this thing new so I've owned it for 20 years now but this is my daily driver and then the empty spot over here is my wife and son's daily driver I'll insert a picture here but uh, it's a more interesting vehicle too especially for my wife it's a 2006 Ram 2500 diesel uh, four by four so she strolls around with 5.9 Cummins uh, making 610 foot-pounds of torque and like 350 horsepower but that's our daily chariot but right behind me is our packed garage here are the daily beasts my my projects that is a 71 Plymouth Fury station wagon it's a sports suburban it's actually changed a little bit to the grill and uh, hood it looks more like a 70, but it's a 71, but it's a real sports suburban and a real big block car. It came with a 383. Put a 440 in it. I've had a couple of motors in it. I'm actually in between motors right now because I blew the 440 that's in it. Had a head gasket blow. Block is cracked. Um, but that motor I built um, a little over 20 years ago. <clears throat> the new motor's off to the side. And right in front, there's my uh, extension cord. And then if you see my airbrush compressor sitting on top of the, the hood. Most of my airbrushing is actually done right here, right on the pavement. You can see the paint drips and whatnot. This is where I normally do my airbrushing. But since I filmed a few, they were done in the backyard with the table and much cleaner appearance. But this is where I do my actual airbrushing most of the time. Um, just right here in front of the cars or just outside the garage where I'll close the door and the hose will be outside. But uh, on the wagon, there's a pair of 440 source aluminum heads that were on the old motor they've been refreshed I don't know if I'm going to use them on the new one a couple of intakes uh, Mopar M1 dual plane aluminum and then an Edelbrock Victor Jr. single plane and then my dual snorkel air cleaner and some other stuff the roller lifters but it's packed in tight you see there's 
you can't walk down the side here and then in between it and my wife's car which is a 71 Chevelle you can't walk between it either but this is her 71 Chevelle it's a Malibu it's not a, an original super sport but she bought this car in 95 it's really the first car she has bought in and uh, we've had it a long time we were dating when we bought it I was with her but it's a 350 375 horse Vortec headed um, fast easy EFI fuel injection overdrive tranny 12 bolt rear end she's built pretty good and, and a lot of fun to drive and is built um, let me do some more info on it but she's had it since 95 that station wagon has actually been in my family since 83 82 I've owned it since 92 it's my first car I learned to drive in it and she's a beast and the new motor sitting right here that's the 512 stroker with a roller cam that's going in the station wagon um, it's on hold due to financial responsibilities so I started building that a couple years ago but uh, it's pretty far along but I have to get some other things done family obligations and bills here's a, a workbench that's in the garage and then down under here I've got miscellaneous parts kits and then over here there's more parts in my tubs they're kind of in here to keep them out of my out of the way my son um, he's very curious my toolbox and then on top of my station wagon there's where the cars dry when I airbrush the bodies you can see them right there and then some more kits and then the station wagon is full of project parts for for that car and then the front of the Chevelle custom painted this is the the clear coat I'm using but this is the car I painted in this garage you can kind of see the overspray on the garage floor but we spent 11 years building this car so it was a complete frame off build so it's nothing like it was originally and we'll be taking it out so when you're watching this video this weekend when I watch this video we'll be taking this car out to the good guys show we entered it and registered it um, so we're gonna be having a good time with it so um, with that I just wanted to say thank you for for watching my channel and and uh, for a channel that's uh, two months old and and hit 200 subscribers I'm very thankful for that um, I'm glad you guys are all enjoying what I do and what I'm putting out there I'm um, getting used to a camera here so so let me uh, get used to you know filming myself um, and and I really appreciate what you guys you know the comments and everything and I'm glad you're enjoying what I'm doing and and I'm enjoying building I want you to know you know I don't expect you guys to emulate or copy anything I do I just put it out there so you can see what I'm doing and answer the questions of what I'm doing and what I'm sharing um, so if you guys have any questions or comments I, I appreciate it but I, I appreciate the the following and, and how my videos are being uh, received so it's it's a great honor it's a lot of fun for me I'm enjoying doing this I've been building models since I was eight years old I'm 46 now my story is just like many of you guys um, when I turned 16 I got my driver's license I started to play around you know with that car right there and and cruising and having a good time and and so I stopped building models for a while but after my wife and I got married in 2000 we bought this house um, ran you know didn't have money but had a lot of time and a lot of space and I still had my model cars and I started building again and I haven't stopped you know some of my builds have gotten a little bit simpler if you noticed in my latest ones I don't do a whole lot of wiring um, don't go too crazy on interior detailing they appear box stock even though they're really not um, I do a lot of mixing and matching which you're seeing um, so I'm just glad you guys are enjoying them and for me the most important part of it is just having fun and I really like how the models look and the stance on the shelves so that's what I'm highly focusing on but just having a good time and, and researching and, and my subjects which I love you guys know that but uh, again I just want to thank you and I hope you enjoyed this tour and, and see you know what you know what I'm working with and the house I'm in it's you know, a little small it's it was the space I've got and it's what I'm using and and I really appreciate you guys tuning in and I'll talk to you again you guys have a good time